Welcome to Health HQ. This is an online showcase for the Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences degree offerings for the 2023 academic year. Um, thanks for joining us for tonight's webinar regarding the Bachelor of Oral Health program. Uh, my name is Matt and I am a future student advisor in the future students team. I'll be emceeing the event today. Um, just to begin, uh, I'd like to start off by acknowledging and paying respects to the Ghana people, the traditional custodians whose ancestral lands we gather on. Uh, we acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship the Ghana people have to country. We respect and value the past, present and ongoing connection to the land and cultural beliefs. Right, I'd just like to introduce our panel now. Um, to begin, uh, we've got Dr. Jennifer Gray here, the program coordinator for the uh, oral health program. Hello, everyone. Thank you. We also have Jaden and Han, who are two uh, students within the program, I believe in third year, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. that's correct. Great, thank you. I'm just going to hand over to Jennifer to present some information about the degree now. Thank you. Um, so my name is uh, Jennifer Gray and I'm the program coordinator for the Bachelor of Oral Health and also for the Graduate Certificate in Oral Health Science. Um, oral health, it's uh, always been an interest. I've been involved in oral health um, and teaching oral health for about 40 years. And it's something that I've just found as a, a fantastic as a career. Why did, oh, Sorry. Um, why did um, I choose it? I knew that I always wanted to work with children. I always love teaching um, and I think that's a key part of what we do as an oral health therapist, as well as look for that preventive aspect for um, our patients and working towards having really good oral health. And so why is it something that's uh, interesting? It's more than just trying to fix teeth, it's actually trying to really make people have the best teeth they can, have the best smile they can, and it makes such a difference to patients once they have really good oral health. And to be able to contribute to that is fantastic. So with the Bachelor of Oral Health, it has um, a range of different components that there's uh, dental therapy or working with children, and then there's periodontics where you're working mainly with adults. So you can see the whole range of people um, and a range of skills as part of the oral health degree. Uh, that includes things like oral health diagnosis, being able to examine patients and check the state of their oral health, to be able to provide treatment, whether that's restorations, preventive work, whether that's some periodontic with some hygiene work. So it covers all ages and all walks of life. So for example, it might be that you teach a young child how to brush their teeth properly, um, and set them on a path for a lifetime of healthy teeth and gums. Uh, you might provide examinations, fillings, uh, tooth extractions uh, if it's needed. You might work within government clinics or you might actually own your own oral health clinic. And that's been something that's developed over the last few years where we have oral health therapists who own their own practice and employ other practitioners to work with them. So it's got a whole range of opportunities for you as a career. You can also be involved in developing educational campaigns to promote oral health, working within schools, working with other health professionals. And we very much like that idea of working together as a team with health professionals because each part of dental really improves health overall. Good health improves good oral health. So working together within a team is really important. So if you are the sort of person that really likes working with people, communicating, building rapport with people, then this is a really good option for you. You also have an opportunity to have quite a flexible work schedule um, and a very competitive salary um, as part of that career. One of the important parts that people really like with this as a career is that there is lots of variety. 
and that you get an opportunity to extend your practice in the future in a range of areas. You can do additional studies. Um, for example, the graduate certificate in oral health science where you can do fillings and restorations on adults um, and work in a different capacity within practices. So it does give a range of options for you. So the other um, option then is looking at why would you study oral health here at Adelaide? I mean, we believe this is uh, the best university in Australia to study oral health. And we rate highly in the prestigious world rankings and offer a strong cohort community. So we have numbers of about 30 in each year level. So it's not too big, um, but it's also got a good number of people from a variety of different backgrounds that make it a really good community to study in. The Adelaide Dental School has a reputation for outstanding teaching and that's been built over a, a proud 100 year history. Um, and we are ranked um, in the top 30 dental schools um, worldwide. Um, we are also the only Australian dental school to make that top 50. Within the university, we have a new dental teaching hospital that we've uh, been in for the last few years. And in the state of the art, uh, Adelaide Health and Medical Sciences Building. And that incorporates the dental hospital that is the top two floors of that building. It is a three year degree um, where you will then become a qualified oral health therapist. One of the other aspects that we have with our facilities that are um, a lot of new facilities, new learning hubs, but also the Adelaide Dental Simulation Clinic, which has 90 individual simulators. It also has two dental surgeries um, and radiographic facilities as part of that. You can um, see in the image there, the mannequins that are set up within the dental simulation clinic. And this gives an opportunity to um, have some artificial teeth where you practice over uh, particularly the first two years of the degree, practicing a number of different techniques um, on those mannequins to develop all of your skills before you actually work on a lot of the patients. Within that, we have um, a vending machine for artificial teeth. So instead of getting food and drinks from vending machines, in our dental school, you can get uh, artificial teeth. Um, we also, as I said, have the Adelaide Dental Hospital that is an 89 chair um, that offers specialist services as well as general dental services. There's a plaster laboratory um, and it provides sort of that range of services across the whole degree, working in conjunction with the dental surgery program, uh, both in the simulation clinics and within the hospital. So you actually get to provide a range of treatment to the clients within uh, the dental service under the supervision of qualified dentists and oral health therapists. One of the key components of the degree is the extended clinical placements that we have. So you actually start in um, clinics and in the simulation clinic in the first year. So you start straight away developing those practical skills. In the first year, you actually practice on each other. Uh, you don't do fillings on each other, but you will check each other's mouths and review all of the teeth and the gums um, and do examinations without doing anything uh, further with those. You might take impressions on each other. You might develop mouth guards um, so that you can really start that early practice in the first year. In the second year, you start to work in some of the community clinics within the metropolitan Adelaide area. So that on some days you'll actually work in a simulation clinic where you practice uh, restorations. But then when you go into the clinics, you'll do examinations on some of the patients. That's gradually uh, extended so that you might provide some preventive care, you might provide some hygiene care, 
And then once you've developed your skills from the simulation clinic, you will start doing some restorations. That is predominantly in the third and final year of the program where you spend most of your year working out in the practices and developing all of those skills. There's a range of different environments that you work within. Um, so the community outreach program with common ground where you can provide care to um, those that aren't able to access general care, um, but you can also work within rural clinics um, as well as the metropolitan clinics. So it's particularly providing care to those that are disadvantaged and unable to access um, private clinics. And you do that all under the supervision of um, oral health therapists and dentists. So our degree um, offers a small supportive inclusive cohort, as I mentioned, with about 30 students um, in each um, cohort. So you often develop lifelong friendships um, and certainly leadership is encouraged within the cohort and within the university. And we really offer an immersive style of teaching from the expert staff where it's really designed to empower and promote your individual skills. You do also share classes and common core subjects with the dental students um, who may become your colleagues in the future. So you can see here on the screen, um, in the first year, you get an introduction to oral health therapy and that covers um, human biology and anatomy and that is particularly with the dental students. We will look at dental diseases and preventive management in dental and health science um, and really start to focus on the foundations of client care in your clinical practice. And that's further developed in the dental simulation clinic and with some clinical placements at Phyllis Plains. In the second year, you start to treat real patients across a variety of the clinics and really start to develop that deeper understanding there's further human biology looking at medical conditions and medications that might impact dental care and might impact your patients. And then further explore some of the environmental and social aspects of oral health in dental and health sciences. In the third year, that is predominantly clinical work and it does involve a bit of online work within um, your theory aspects. And so you will have clinical practice uh, where you're out in the clinics, but you then further develop all the specialist areas um, within your, uh, looking at areas such as periodontics, looking at health promotion, population health, orthodontics, et cetera. So there is a whole range of um, areas that you cover where you really build on knowledge from each year. Um, sorry, I've just lost my screen. Um, so what are the career opportunities that you've got? You've got preventive and general dental treatment. You also have uh, educational campaigns that you can work in, uh, private practice, government clinics, community clinics, there are also school-based clinics and school-based vans that you can um, work in. There's also opportunities for policy um, and research. And we have a number of our academics that have completed honours degrees and PhDs um, are available if you want to really work in that area of research. So if we're looking then at um, needing to apply, you need to, um, so some of the admissions information here, you need to look at your minimum requirements, um, whether that's through um, SATAC and your ATAR, um, or whether that is with your, um, uh, um, your baccalaureate, and making sure that you meet the requirement of mathematics or sciences. So the application process to make sure that you have the prerequisite subjects, that you have the um, academic score, 
and you need to register for the UCAT. You need to complete that UCAT as a requirement. And then you need to apply for SATAC. After completing each of those, you need to determine whether or not you're eligible for interview um, and have an, an interview where you'll be offered uh, an opportunity through, um, for, through Zoom to complete that interview. Um, and then in late, uh, early or middle January, um, they will look at offers that will be made to successful applicants. Uh, so if you can move on to the next slide, thanks Matt. Um, and that's a similar process for the international application process. Again, prerequisite subjects, meeting the academic score, you also need to meet the English language requirements and register for the UCAT um, through the online application. And then after that, you would be advised if you're eligible for interview um, and completion of interviews before the offers are made in uh, December and January. If you could have the next slide, thanks, Matt. So I think that's the end of my comments, if there are any questions or answers. Yeah, thanks very much, Jennifer. That was a really comprehensive presentation. Yeah, excellent. Um, we're just going to do some Q&A now. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop those in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Uh, it can be a question relating to the presentation that we've just watched or um, something for one of the student panelists or a general question about studying uh, with us at the University of Adelaide. Um, you can also choose to submit your question anonymously and there's really no such thing as a bad question. Um, so we will be um, taking a, a quick look for some questions. Great. I have a question here. Um, can I apply for this course using the STAT test score? Um, yeah. yeah Jennifer, would you like to? Yes, that's a, a good question. Um, yes, you can. It needs to meet sort of the same standard as the um, academic. So, yes, there are a range of options in terms of applying, but it can be through your ATAR or your baccalaureate, but also it can be with the STATS test score, but still it's the same process for the rest. That's right. Essentially, um, you will still need to meet a subject prerequisite, but there are a range of ways to do that via some other bridging studies. I'm happy to have a chat with you through the uh, Future Students Team Department about the many options you have for that type of thing as well. Yeah. Another question here, um, could I apply for this degree through a transfer? Uh, if so, what would the minimum GPA required, uh, minimum GPA, GPA be for this one? Uh, I beg your pardon, Matt. Um, Question is, could I apply for this degree um, through a transfer? If so, what would be the minimum GPA required? Yeah, so the minimum uh, GPA is a uh, pass in all of the subjects. So it needs to have um, a 4.0 um, GPA. And you still need, as you mentioned with the previous need, to still meet the requirements in terms of um, the prerequisite. That's right. Um, for transfer students as well, you would will also don't forget to sit the UCAT as well. Yes. If you are interested in applying for next year, keep in mind that UCAT applications, I believe bookings will close by the end of this month. We're already in the late booking period. Mm -hmm. So do keep that in mind. And you would still need to um, have the interview. That's right. Um, another question. Um, do I have to be studying full time in this program? Yes, you do. It is a full time program. It doesn't uh, offer part time options. And part of that is that we've actually um, very got much got an integrated curriculum that it's designed that all of the different courses that you study complement um, and add to each of the others. So they're, they're set up to be quite synchronous in the way that it's presented. So it is full time only option. Thank you. Um, another question from the audience. Um, in the workplace, do oral health hygienists feel significantly um, 
different compared to dentists in, um, in terms of status? That's right, I suppose, a very individual aspect. Um, and we work very much within the dental school that we work as a team and that you have a range of different um, practitioners that might be the dentist, it might be specialists, it might be oral health therapists, that might be a hygienist, but it's also the dental assistants are part of that team. And we feel that is the comprehensive care that you have as that team. So the, each of the different roles, they have different aspects that they contribute. And so that is the complete team approach and we think provides the best care. That's what we really like to enhance as part of the studying and working together where you often study some aspects together, but certainly work side by side in the clinic to start to develop that sort of relationship. And it might be that graduates will start to work together. They might have studied together and then end up in a practice together. That's great. I believe you know, similar to most other clinical programs and clinical roles, you'd be working in a healthcare team regardless. And this is going to be the nature of the role. Right. Yeah. A couple of questions about the student focus. Um, Han, if you don't mind, um, what do you wish you knew before starting the oral health program? Um, yeah. Hello. Um, I probably wish I knew the intensity. Um, no one really told me how intense it is, especially in first year. It's very intense. It's a very nine to five every day. Um, comparing it to my other my other friends' degrees, you know, they had so much spare time. Um, you can't compare it to another degree. So that's something I wish I probably knew beforehand, but it's very rewarding. Thank you. Um, do you have any advice for students um, in high school that would prepare themselves for studying this program as well? Um, at least for myself, um, I found the course to be very similar to high school in terms of um, perhaps the, the on-campus hours. So for me, yeah, it, like Han said, it was a very nine to five, five days a week. Um, and because it's such a small cohort of roughly about 30 people, um, you sort of get to know each other really well and, and being able to sort of um, lean on each other for support is really, really important. So I think, um, making those early connections, uh, not just within, of course, um, your course and, and, and your group, but um, like um, Jennifer said in, in, in the beginning, um, we work quite closely with, uh, with the BDS students, the dentistry students as well. Um, and we share a lot of courses um, and, you know, making connections with those students as well is, is definitely beneficial to both, you know, uni, uni um, lifestyle and, and, and outside of that as well. That's great, thank you. Uh, one, one additional question. Um, what aspect have you, um, Jaden, what aspect have you enjoyed the most so far in your studies in this program? Um, for me personally, um, it, it's definitely the academic staff. Um, I think you always hear stories coming out of high school of this isn't gonna fly in university, you know, they're not gonna help you, but they're not gonna baby you. Um, to be honest, for me, that couldn't be further from the truth. I think, at least in my personal experience, all the staff I've ever interacted with have been extremely supportive. Um, both, you know, if you wanted to talk about, again, uni or if you're having problems outside of that, um, they'll always make time for you. Um, they'll always make sure you're okay and, and you're keeping up to, to date with your, your assignments and things. So um, in that respect, um, that's definitely the part I've enjoyed the most is, is getting to meet all these new people um, and being in such a supportive environment. I feel yeah, really grateful, really lucky. That's great to hear, thank you. Um, with a program like this, with the small cohort, it really does mean you're going to have that extra focus on each other and um, more of a tight knit team as well, absolutely. Yeah, I'm just taking a quick look for some additional questions. Um, now, I had a couple of questions from um, prospective students about UCAT scores. 
Um, Jennifer, would you like to briefly discuss how this works in terms of ranking? I'm happy to take care of it if you would prefer not to as well. I feel welcome to add anything if I uh, don't cover it all, but there isn't um, a set score with UCAT. So um, each person sits the UCAT and comes up with a score and then it's a ranking list. And so we look at the number of people that um, we deem as um, that we would need for interviews to meet our quota. And so we work through down to that. If we said, okay, we will be doing, uh, we think a uh, hundred interviews to get the quota that we need um, and make sure that we've got enough through that process, then we actually go down and find out then where is the, the cutoff that that sits. Um, to make them eligible for interview because we will always interview far more than we need because people have different options um, on what they'd like to accept. They apply for multiple programs. Um, so we need to make sure we account for that in terms of that ranking. So there's no specific score. Yeah, um, <laughs> with regards to UCAT testing and scoring and everything else, it will essentially be um, your score relative to other people. Um, you can refer to the admissions guide for each of the UCAT programs we have, our programs that use the UCAT as part of the admissions criteria for some general advice. Uh, my understanding is per the admissions guides, we look at uh, sections one through four with equal weighting with section five used as a tiebreaker, the situation of judgment test component. Um, got a question from an audience member about sitting the UCAT online. You have to discuss that with Pearson directly as they administer the, the UCAT testing themselves. My understanding is that you will need to attend a testing centre, but you can contact Pearson VUE for, for further advice about that one. Um, one other question um, about being a uh, transferring across from another university. Um, does the program accept students transferring from another university's degree programs? Uh, it's really the same process that it would be for anyone else that has studied within um, our university. Um, that they would need to go through the normal application process and then it would be looking at their GPA and do they meet the GPA requirements? Do they meet the prerequisite requirements? You would still need to go through and sit the UCAT and as well as sit the interview. So it doesn't bypass any of those aspects of the um, admissions requirements, but it just means that it would be using a GPA to meet the academic level rather than um, an ATAR. That's great to hear. Thank you. Um, yeah, we typically are more than happy to accept students transferring from other programs. Um, generally, we'll be able to use the higher if you're ATAR or GPA, depending on how much study you've completed. If you have any questions about this type of thing, you can contact our future, student at any, uh, future students team at any time. Um, one final question I have here. Um, Uh, for the student panellists, um, what are some extracurricular activities um, that you can get involved in during your time at university? Do you have any recommendations? Um, hello. Uh, I'd say definitely uh, any of the student clubs and student support. It gives you the most of the student community, not just in your course, but in the university as well. Um, and these are the people who've been in the university previously or have been in these courses for years. And would offer a lot of different services for those who are international students. There's a lot of international student supports groups in the university and as well as the union that to give you free breakfast, free lunches here and then and offer you a lot of wonderful services. And specifically, we have one ourselves within Adota who offers students the most information and connecting students to all of these larger industries in a larger world of oral health and industry and that industry. Yep. Great, thank you. Um, now, do we have any other questions from the audience? We have a couple of remaining queries here that are a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of nature, so I will certainly follow up with you. Um, our team will follow up with you a little bit later about those. Okay, so. <clears throat> In terms of what's next, um, if you do have any other questions or want to chat with the Future Students team, um, you can email us at any time at start, S-T-A-R-T, at adelaide.edu.au, and we'll be able to get in touch shortly. 
Um, you can also find out more information about the university and our degree programs at adelaide.edu.au, um, particularly the degree finder website we have is really, really useful for entry requirements, um, tuition fees, program structure, and other kind of key information that are you know, the important decision-making information you may need regarding programs. Um, now, also we do have coming up um, on Sunday, the 14th of August, we will have our open day. Um, so pop that in your diary as it's probably, well, it certainly is the best way to explore the campus, uh, come along for some campus tours, uh, meet program academics and students in current programs, um, and uh, bring an umbrella because it traditionally rains on open day. <laughs> so um, that just about wraps everything up for us this evening. Uh, I'd just like to thank our panelists for uh, their, taking their time this evening, our program coordinator and student team um, in the program. Really appreciate you taking the time to come along to help out with this. Um, and thanks to all of our audience members for joining us. Uh, thank you and good night.